What's crack lagging? It's your boy Broshmo. Just in case you did not know, so we're back again, once again, for another video. This time we're going over my high risk, high reward prospects in the 2021 NFL Draft class. Goathouse actually put out his boom or bust prospects yesterday. And I was like, that's a good idea. So I'm gonna leave a link to that uh, link in the description below to that video. But I thought, hey, let's add to that. Let me give you some of my guys that uh some of my prospects that i think are kind of boomer bust high risk high reward and i i wanted to give you all some different takes different players so all these guys are different except for one because he's just the most obvious so i'm just gonna go over him first but go ahead become a bro and subscribe leave that thumbs up if you enjoy the content and as always and Indulge in that nice, beautiful football discourse in the comment section below. Without further ado, let's go ahead. Let's get into the nitty gritty. Starting with Gregory Russo. This was the guy that, again, he's just the most obvious. I'm pretty sure actually Goat House probably started his video with this. And you might notice, hey, that's a good looking layout. Well, I just kind of crafted it from uh, what uh, Goat House did just because it looked good. Made my own little version of it, and it kind of gets the point across. So, again, credit to him. He puts out banger content. Check his crap out, man. Which, if you're checking this channel out, you probably already know who he is. So, uh, yeah. He, he big, big channel. Me, Paquito. But Gregor Russo, obviously, uh, the reward with him. Freakish frame. Just huge physical upside. Uh, in terms of just extre extremely powerful. The problem is where he won a lot was from the interior. He really had trouble well, rushing guys from the outside. And it makes a lot of sense when you see his pro day because not a lot of explosiveness. And um, when we saw the vert and the broad jump and the agility wasn't that great either. So yeah, he has trouble bending the edge. Part of that also technique didn't really have a bevy of pass rush moves. And you got to keep in mind, you're watching tape of a guy in his first year as a starter, fortunately opted out. So we don't know where he is in terms of development when it comes to that. So it's really hard to kind of project that. You're really just projecting the upside. He became a bit more risky. The pro day wasn't exactly what I thought. I was kind of hoping. I was like, maybe this guy you could put at five tech if he wins so much from the inside. Came in. I was hoping he might get to that 270 region, but he didn't. He's like 266. Uh, yeah, 266. But again, dude, you love the frame. You love the length. It's a little risky in the first. So I got him to an early second at this point. But uh, yeah, do you. Got to love my Hurricanes. Representing, even on lists that I don't want them to represent on. But uh, let's go ahead with some different prospects. We're going to start with Caleb Farley. I'm pretty sure Caleb Farley was on our uh, Go House's video. If so, then that's my bad. But again, kind of an obvious one just because of the injuries. I think he had an ACL tear back in like 2017, 2018. Uh, then he did suffer from the back spasms in 2019, his actually banger year, his one year of elite production. Uh, yeah, actually, the ACL tear was 2017 because 2018 wasn't that good. <laughs> uh, but 2019, he had a banger of a year, but again, the back spasms. And then just recently, he couldn't work out on his pro day because he opted out in 2020. Kind of hope to see him on his pro day because he does have these high-end traits that kind of get corners drafted in the top 10. Just think of CJ Henderson, length, speed, just press ability. Overall, just elite production. Granted, one year, but really one year is all you need to get people talking, people salivating, people drooling. Oh, Caleb Farley. Again, not so much with the back injuries, kind of a concern. Granted, the procedure he had was kind of like a real in and out. He should be ready for training camp real easy. I think it was to remove um, like a disc or something like that. Uh, but again, you kind of worry that this may be a reoccurring injury, especially with the back. The back is kind of among the worst injuries you can have. So there are that concerns. But again, dude just oozes elite shutdown corner traits. That's hard to pass up. I think he's definitely at this point probably the third, maybe even fourth corner taken in this class. 
but I think some team's going to be willing to take a shot on him right now. I got him as a mid first rounder. I, again, I'd be willing to go out on a limb think, and think, hey, I'm going to bet on these trades. I'm going to bet on these trades. Worked out with CJ Henderson. Granted, he didn't have the injury concerns. So now off of Caleb Folly to Jamar Johnson. I'm not going to lie. We're going to talk about a lot of the secondary because – Again, secondary is kind of my thing. I love, I love, I love safety. I love corner. Those are some of my favorite positions to evaluate. Let's talk Jamar Johnson. Uh, kind of a fast riser, a name that's kind of come out of nowhere in the draft community, and I could see why. Like the guy, like his athleticism is just wild. And this guy kind of was a ball hawk. Like what going back, like throughout his career. Seven interceptions over over just what? What? Le- less than 800 snaps. Seven interceptions, six pass breakups. Uh, the guy played the slot a majority of the time in 2019, then moved to play in deep safety where he just moves different. The amount of control this guy has um, when he goes to attack the ball. Like, again, this guy oozes ball hawk. Uh, two picks off of Justin Fields himself. Very impressive um, where you do raise questions is, again, only 800 snaps, limited sample size. That's actually going to be a lot of prospects this year just because, uh, well, 2020 kind of sucked for us all. So there's it, we're not going to be looking at mu- like the sample sizes we're normally accustomed to. So we're taking this over much smaller sample sizes. But – he did have like a twenty what was twenty six point five missed tackle rate. Physicality just ain't his thing. He's not a guy meant to be in the box, which is great because deep safety way more valuable in the NFL. That's why I got a late second round grade on him, maybe even mid second. I'd be willing to take him at because, like I said, this guy just the way he moves, the way he um, just flips his hips when he needs to like go and defend deep. Uh, Man is just good. I love the movement skills. I love the movement skills. And then on to Tay Gowan. Like I said, we're talk. We're gonna be talking a lot of corners, a lot of safeties. Tay Gowan. The quite obvious uh, risk is the sample size. Not a lot of it, and it's against well, what you would consider lower competition, the group of five. So. In terms of sample size, we only have 2019, 2020. He he ended up getting um the Rona and was like, hey man, I don't want to put my family in danger, so I'm just gonna opt out, which really sucks. This is a guy, and he didn't even get a Senior Bowl invite. How you gonna Mobile? How you gonna do him dirty like that? Like I really would have loved to watch this guy at the Senior Bowl because he, he just has the ideal press man corner traits, like. The, the guy legitimately shut down Simi Fohoko, who he big, he fast. You like to see that. He's got good acceleration, good speed overall. His pro day is today, so we're going to learn a lot more about him. So there might be a bit of revision to this list, but I got an early, I think third round is where I'm willing to take a shot on this guy. Again, only played for Central Florida in 2019. He was like a Juco transfer. So, hey. Ho ho. I'm hoping Tay Gowan really uh looks the part. A lot of people I think are really starting to come um are starting to come around to him or at least start to know about him. Cause honestly, this guy's Twitter game on point. Just gonna say that. I'm just gonna say, hey, that should be in the rewards. A plus on the Twitter game. Follow you some Tay Gowan. Uh, that, and again, you, you look at, you kind of wish these guys be closer to 200. He's pushing 185. Again, pro days today, we're going to learn a lot more about him. So yeah, uh, again, he kind of flexes high, high end traits. So you, you want to see it. He, and I'll, I'll give him credit. Hey, 2019, he was dominant. The one time we saw him against not Juco competition, he was dominant. And then Kelvin Joseph, of course, he's going to be on this list. I talked about him in my overhyped prospects. Uh, the sample size. The guy, he, he was a transfer from LSU. He was suspended before he opted to hit the transfer portal. Uh, almost came back to LSU, decided not to. 
I uh, haven't seen any I couldn't find any specifics on why he was trans or why he was suspended. Uh some of the people in the NFL that know uh says it wasn't good. That's all I got. Uh so let's just go ahead and look at his play though. Again, we're only looking at like a limited sample size. Like cuz he only had what 200 some snaps at LSU. It wasn't pretty. He was a freshman. Got to be on the field in 2020. And looked pretty darn good, mainly against Alabama. If you're going to look at good against a squad, it's going to be Alabama. Unfortunately, didn't really help their team win, but eh, you can't blame him. He did his part. The only thing is, there's a lot of inconsistencies on tape. He got murdered by Ole Miss for two touchdowns. Vandy put up, what, over 100 receiving yards when targeting him. Vandy, again, a bit inconsistent. Oh, but he shut down Alabama. But Vandy. Uh, but he does have elite traits uh, for the position. Almost at that six foot threshold, but and almost at the 200. You love to see that for a potential shutdown corner. On top of that, his uh, let's actually take a look because uh, he's got the length. Uh, let me see. I have this pulled up right here on a side note. Brandon Eagles, who I haven't talked about in a year. Guy that undersized, but I liked a lot. Oh, low key, man. He, he might be a late late day three slot corner, like high tier prospect, man. He, he put up some good looking numbers. But in Joseph, the length, while it is above average, it's 30, it's uh, over 31 inches. It's not like it's elite. It's above average. It's good. It's good. Uh, but hey, man, everywhere else, though, he put up banners. Um, ran under a 4 3. Phenomenal. His uh, broad, which looked great. You saw the explosiveness. You like to see that uh, acceleration, potential closing speed. It's kind of what you get from the broad. Vertical didn't really match up, but eh, vertical's kind of kind of wonky. You, you kind of take the broad jump a bit more serious than the actual vertical. So, again, the guy's got elite traits for the position, or at least above average traits uh, that are borderline elite. But, again, small sample size, very inconsistent. How am I going to take take a shot on that? It, like, honestly, I'd feel bad any more than the third round to take a shot on a guy like that. You're going to tell me this guy's a better prospect in terms of their – production and sample size to guys like Eric Stokes to guys like Tyson Campbell. No, I'm not buying it. That's just my opinion though. Uh, let's continue with, I had to include Tamari and Terry on this list because I outright love Tamari and Terry. He's a phenomenal, like for me, I, I was extremely high on Tamari and Terry to begin the season. And then 2020, much like it did for most of us, it absolutely sucked for tamari and terry uh he got bigger he was pushing like the 220 because he wanted to show he could be physical off the line and then mike nor uh mike Novell, norvell uh, however the hell you say his name former memphis coach bringing his gimmicky offense to the acc and ruining ruining many florida state prospects uh draft stock just gonna say that marvin wilson Nazareel Dean, they all know what I mean. So, yeah, Tamari and Terry, man. What do you like about the guy? Strong hands, exceptionally strong. He's got a ton of highlight catches, especially on the sideline. He is literally a big big play threat waiting to happen. You may look at him and be like, oh, okay, he's like a bigger contested catch guy. Uh, more, or not even, like he does, has, does have a lot of contested catches. But this guy is a vertical separator. Like, he's got a lot of, hey, you just got burned on his tape. Uh, but he's not just that. Like, he showed, hey, I can do after the catch. Not just after the long catch, but in the screen game in 2019, whoo, it looked dirty. It looked nasty. He was averaging 20 yards after the catch. The guy was good. The guy was good. And then, like, again, man, 2020, man, suck. In this, in this gimmicky offense, he was there. He, the one of his biggest gripes, he didn't really get to show an expanded route tree. He was really just used as a, hey, 
It's either screen slant or go. Have your choice, which is unfortunate. Hey, dude, slant though is kind of nasty. Pretty good catch radius. Um, a lot of people question the physicality at the line of scrimmage. That part of that is why he put on the weight to get to be more of a boxer there at the line of the scrimmage. Um, it was all right. Um, his good off on the line, I think, is adequate. It's good enough for me. Um, when he came to his pro day, I thought it looked good. He did come in weighing in a lot less, so I guess he put on, uh, took off some of that weight. To, I'm assuming to run faster, but I think he, he's probably his playing weight's probably going to be around 210, 215. Uh, how I project him, I have it. I have here mid fourth. I'm probably going to have a third round grade on him. I'm an absolute Tamari and Terry Mark. Um, I'm blinded. I'm, I see him through rose tinted lens, rose tinted glasses, straight up. I, I, I call, I call a spade a spade, man. I'll be transparent. You, you could tell me whatever, how you feel about tomorrow and Terry. I'm going to disagree. Even if it's rational, even if you rationalize it. Uh, I, I mentioned the strong hands and I'd feel, uh, I would feel, I feel, disingenuous if i don't mention wow what about those drops a lot of them were focus drops they're not ball skill drops he has plenty of ball skills again take a look at the contested catches he's got a ton of them uh a lot of them were actually uh, in the slot or in the not slot in the um slants or were either on slants or screens so basically he's looking up field before he even has the ball guess what those focus drops they're very coachable. Ball skill drops, not does so much. Ask our boy MVS, unfortunately. I hate that he's kind of the poster boy of, hey, ball skills, what? Why are you catching with your chest? You don't do that. Uh, anyway, I love Tamari and Terry. I think he's well worth the risk. Um, I would dare say parts of his game are, I'm not going to say it because y'all are going to, Take it as a comp, and I hate giving out comps because people take them too literally. Ardarius Washington. Let's get back to the secondary. Uh, it's kind of obvious why he's kind of a boomer bust, why he is a high-risk, high-reward. It's because of his size. The guy's size sucks. You look at him, and you're like, well, he's slot only. You literally immediately dismiss him. There is, like, you you might say there – he could be the exception to the rule, but wh who wants to bet on the exception that this guy might be the exception? So a lot of people are going to view him as a slot only, at least initially early in his career, just because of his size. Uh, limited range too. I won't trust him deep. He's got all right speed. He and like really like he's built like a slot corner in terms of his skill set. Like his change of direction, his lateral movement. Top notch and his skill, like his his just overall understanding of how uh, of how routes develop and just him as a processor is probably among the best in this class. Like this guy got his hands on the ball a lot in 2019 and in 2020. However, there was a significant dip to his production in 2020. His completion percentage allowed was a lot worse. Uh, his tackling was a bit more questionable, which isn't good when you're coming in at only 5'8", 178. So it's hard to warrant anything higher than a third round grade on Washington just because there is a lot of risk. And just, again, guys like him just don't translate. So it is risky. Does it mean I think he won't? No, that's why I got a third round grade on him. I think he's well worth it. He could be, he could be sneakily one of the better prospects in this class. I like him a lot. Kadarius Tony. I was like going through this and I was like, who's the obvious answer here? It's Kadarius Tony. I know, I know Go House said Rondell Moore. That's more of the obvious answer. But a guy similarly built and his game is similarly tailor made to would be Kadarius Tony, man. Kadarius Tony, he's coming in a bit bigger though. He's 5'11, four inches taller, and 193. So. I wouldn't necessarily say he's as jacked as Rondale Moore. He's not built like that, but uh, Kadarius Tony definitely 
was more of a gadget player there in Florida. At least that's how he was utilized. Does that mean that that's his ceiling? He's just a high-end gadget player? I don't think so. Because despite being not necessarily the most polished route runner, I think at the Senior Bowl, he really showed that just his physical, his his athletic ability could make him a scary route runner. I think initially early in his career, he's probably slot, probably a lot of stuff may be schemed. But this guy just where he like it might it's going to be role specific, but oh my gosh, this guy after the catch feels like you can't bring him down. He is legitimately scary with the ball in his hands. Which you may say Ball in his hands. Funny you mentioned that. He had like two or three drops in the senior bowl. Doesn't look pretty good to me. Yeah, well, over the course of what, 150 targets throughout his Florida career? Three drops. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to take the big production over what you saw at the senior bowl. A little, Just a little bit. I think this guy's this guy hands ain't a concern. They are not a concern whatsoever to me. I'm more concerned about, okay, can he become more polished as a route runner, like run more crisp routes? Because, again, this guy's got some freaky movement skills. Uh, and, like, if so, like, he can be quite the weapon, quite the weapon in the NFL. Again, it's just uh, how long does it take him to develop uh, as a route runner? Because I really do think season one, he's going to kind of be role specific. Uh, I don't think he comes in right off the bat and because a lot of people are probably going to make the comp of, <laughs> unless you're making the Tyreek Hill comp, then I'm like, you need to slow down. Um, Darnell Mooney, I think that's a safe comp. I would say Darnell Mooney is a much different, was a much different prospect. Way more physical at the catch point. Um, I think he displayed better ball skills. Uh, and I would definitely say Tony though, movement skills out the wazoo way better. Uh, just, I would say Mooney was a bit more polished in what he can do. Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let's keep this, this train moving with Quentin Miners. Another feels like it's kind of an obvious one, uh, just because of his competition, man. The guy played at Wisconsin Whitewater. What do you expect? But he really blew the pants off the senior bowl. Uh, and I think it's his pro day that really cemented like this guy is a, I put rare athlete for interior. Like, yes, like how he tested was freaky. Like he came into the senior bowl and I was getting this like, okay, this Ben, um, Oh gosh, Ben Barch. There we go. Ben Barch type of feel, but even Ben Barch went what in the fifth round. So I was like, Quentin Myers probably ceilings like, fourth fifth round then he tested and then he again the uh the ali uh marpet type of feel type of small school like oh this guy could probably go in the second third round like this is some unreal type of athleticism that he's provided yes the competition you kind of throw that away he dominated it good he should have dominated it. but you gotta understand he is not by any means a perfect prospect he came from a very run heavy school there at uh wisconsin whitewater and you could tell at the senior bowl like the technique just ain't there yet in terms of pass protection uh uh well where he did win a lot there were definitely some whiffs you know and it came against um just in all honesty like just some of the the guys that were good at converting speed to power. Uh, that's typically where he lost. Granted, I'll say this. For, at center, he learned that position on the fly at the senior bowl and looked pretty darn good at it. I like that. This guy is... Ooh, Miner's a guy I think you're you're willing to take a shot at. Maybe, uh, maybe near the tail end of the second, early third. Hope he develops. Year two, unleash him. Uh, I really like what he can be in maybe an outside zone blocking scheme. Uh, just again, when you have guys with that type of athleticism, you want them to be on the move. Um, you do worry about how he handles power, but not so much. I think he did it pretty well at the senior bowl. He was pretty good at um, laying the anchor, and when he had to, he reset it pretty well as well. So, yeah, man, I, I – 
I'm uh, I'm I'm on the train now, I guess. Choo choo. And then my final guy on the list, Davion Nixon, uh, which is a lot of people are really high on him. Like they see him as like the second uh, defensive interior player to be taken off the board, and I'm just I'm not there, dude. I think the learning curve for him is going to be pretty steep. Um, he didn't become a starter till this past season, where you're like, oh, he dominated. Well, there were also a lot of plays he disappeared at, um, uh, especially in the run game. This guy has a hard time once he gets stuck on a block. There's really no plan B to his uh, pass rush or even in the run game. Like He, he would quite often dis- just be a body, just be a, a guy that's taking up space. Then again, Iowa's system kind of asks you to do that. So, you know, there's kind of give and take there. But uh, again, rare explosiveness for a guy uh, his size. That's really what pops off the charts, you know. But by no means do I think he is a nimble athlete, but a very, very explosive one, which you like to see that. You think those guys can create pressure. They can be penetrators. Uh but when I talk about the learning curve, because again, even a limited sample size in 2019, like it wasn't nearly as dominant. But I go to the learning curve because legitimately this guy does have a, like Davion, does have a learning disability. Uh, it caused him to be in a, um, on a, in a not academically eligible, academically ineligible. There we go. Um, his freshman season, he had to go to like a ju- um community college juco school or something like that uh and then he returned back to the team and i would say yeah this guy is still early in his development because he's a bit he he develops he's just going to develop a bit slower but what he does have the unbridled grit like this i think he's going to be a high-end nfl player eventually in his career i don't know if that'll come in the rookie deal though That's my hesitancy. Like I think this is a guy that might come out on his on the on his last last year on his rookie deal, put out a banger year. Now it's like, okay, well, what do we do now? You know, there's no fifth year option. So that's kind of like where I'm at. You know, I love I uh, I just I I love that type of work ethic. I love that type of grit. I'm just concerned that we won't see it till the end of his rookie deal. And then you're at this fork in the road. It's like, all right, do I really shelve out an extension for one year of production? You kind of, you get concerned, you worry about that. So that's why I have him as a third rounder. Um, I just think there's some other guys I don't have that concern with. So uh, still a phenomenal prospect in a much weaker defensive interior class. Uh, but yeah, man, when you talk about, uh, like, there's some real risk to some of these guys, you know, but, uh, he's the final guy I have on my list. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and you know what that means. That's it for the video. Go ahead. Check out goat houses video on his boomer bus prospects. It's good. I promise. But until next time you be easy, my friends later.